We're pleased to have with us now up next the head coach of the Kansas Jayhawks, Lance Leipold. Coach, if you want to make an opening comment, well, then we'll open it up for questions. Yes, well, thank you, and, and good morning to everyone. It's definitely a pleasure to be here probably this year, uh, even a little special since we didn't make it down here last year. Um, you know, as I, I was joking earlier that, um, you know, this after this event today, I think it's probably officially a year into how everything works. And I think that is pretty resonant within our program as well as we continue to grow and develop and build our program. But um, we're excited about year two. Uh, year one was definitely a whirlwind, but we feel the foundation's been set in many ways. I feel very uh, pleased uh, on how we finished last season where we progressed here in spring and some of the additions to our roster. And uh, we're excited to get going here in August. And uh, I'll open it up for questions. Open it up for questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand. And we'll get a microphone to you. They're in the pink shirts here. They're running back. We'll go right over here front, right in the middle, Coach. Sean J. Ratchet, CBS Sports. Uh, Coach, after this first year, I mean, how do you kind of evaluate success? How do you kind of evaluate progress uh, and kind of what you're trying to build there? Um, that's an excellent question. Uh, you know, I think when you, you know, what we're really saying is sometimes how are you going to measure progress when it's not showing up in the win and loss column all the time? And I, I think we've been, our players have really embraced it. Um, we understand and we, we emphasize as well, we're not in the moral victory business um, and, and we understand that completely. But we're, we're always looking at where, whether it be um, individual improvement in, in certain things, how we've gone about our, our daily business, and, and really how we've connected dots with our players about becoming better holistically, whether it be weight room or academically, and better being better leadership, better teammates, that these things are going to stack upon themselves and, and help us on game day. And I think. Uh, you know, the proof of that is, you know, when a one and eight football team goes on the road and, 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 and come, finds a way to win and, and plays even uh, some even better football maybe the next two weeks and starts showing the signs of closing gaps that, that we have to do. And I, I think that's going to be very imperative again this year. And I think our guys understand that. Coach, we'll go down the left hand side over there, wave at her hand. Hey, Coach, Ryan Chapman, AllCenters.com. You mentioned the good close to the season, but a couple of weeks before, push Oklahoma in that game. How much good momentum did you take from that into the close of the season? How do you carry that over to the offseason? I, I don't know if I caught it all there, but what we took from that that win and, and what we – well, I think the one thing, again, is when you, you all know or <coughs> mostly know what these young men and some of the guys that are here with us today have – gone through multiple head coaches, not just one or two. Some are on three. Some have had, uh, you know, Earl Bostic Jr., our, our offensive tackle, has had at least eight position coaches. And that's not normal and, 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 it, and really not fair. And, and for us to be a, a program that can develop and stay consistent, you know, we have to earn trust. And I, I think the one thing that that win is we started to play better. I, I think the players understood our routine, our message was going to be consistent and we weren't going to waver from it. And and when they saw that and they started to get better in what we were doing and understanding, um, I, I think it started to show itself late in the year. And that win, obviously, uh, in the injection of uh, Jalen Daniels, that quarterback, really helped us uh, those last few games. I've said it also is that, it, in, and with that confidence, uh, I think to me one of the most apparent things was our first spring practice. The volume and confidence of, of communication, especially on the defensive side of the ball, was night and day from the fall. And, and to me it was, hey, we understand it more. We're confident. This is what we do. All those different things hopefully will, will help us, again, uh, play faster, play with more confidence, build on the other things that, uh, that we need to, to, uh, to take a step, especially on the defensive side of the ball, as I said. Okay, Coach, on the right side, right in front of us down here. Hey, Coach, Tim Fitzgerald, GoCoPowerCamp.com and 24-7 Sports. How important is it in this uh, rebuilding process to have the transfer portal and also now the lifting of the scholarship limit? 
Yeah, that's an excellent question, Tim. Uh, as we know, this program, again, it had put itself in some some tough position scholarship number-wise. So, again, that, that'll help whether it's going to alleviate alleviate itself right away this year but I a, a year from now I'll be very confident that we'll we'll be where we need to be in that scholarship <laughs> count and I think across the board for for programs like us uh, that you know it can go either way as we know though with the portal you, you've got to do a great job um, within your roster I am very proud of the fact that we haven't lost anyone in our two deep um, from last year that that didn't leave by graduation um, but at the same time, we've been able to add to that to create. And, and the thing we've tried to emphasize within the program also is for us to get better, we have to be better within our own locker room first. We have to beat Kansas as we go about it. We have to be better than we were the day before. And one of those things that you have to do to get there is that you have to embrace competition. And uh, sometimes we've had positions, and whether it be by youth or other things, that guys haven't been pushed every day in practice. Um, to maintain that spot and that playing time. And I think we, we were able to do some of those things through the portal and create some of that as we head into to, to August and the 2022 season. Coach, we're going to go all the way, way in the back, raising your hand back there. Hey, Landon Reinhardt, 27 Sports. Uh, Jalen Daniels is here. You didn't name a starting quarterback till, right up until the end last season. Are you ready mm -hmm. to name him starter? And if so, what does it mean to have a quarterback this early? Yeah, you, you know, I think Jalen's here for a lot of reasons, and especially the way he played late late in the year for us. You know, the, the two games he played here in the state of Texas as well against West Virginia, a lot of things. Um, I, I jokingly say I haven't named Devin Neal the running back, starting running back either. So it, it's something there. And I, I think your question is very good and very valid, but I think it also goes back to um, – my previous answer a little bit is is embracing competition and and doing things. Um, I think our program knows. I think Jason Bean understands his role and where it's at right now. Jason Bean is, I thought, had a very good spring and and took steps as well, and and he will uh, continue to get better as well. Um, but uh, we know right now where where Jalen is and what we expect to you know him to do in August and as we get ready for game one. Um, you know, and I, as I answer those things in, in a very vague way, I, I still say a year ago, if I was sitting here in front of you, I, I wouldn't have known because I hadn't seen anyone really throw a pass. So, again, to know where we are at the quarterback position in 2022 in July versus last year, it's night and day difference, and I know we'll be able to, to take advantage of that. Okay, Coach, we're going to go right side just about halfway back. Hi, Coach. Uh, Cole Thompson from FanNation.com. Having the veteran ship of guys on the defense wanting to come back, how important is it to have guys like Kenny Logan and a couple of the defensive linemen to really set the tone for the up-and-coming freshmen that are trying to set a new standard in Lawrence? Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's very important when your upperclassmen, guys who have played in Big 12 games and do those things, set an example. Set an example can be in so many different ways. And, and for us, we talk about taking care of ourselves, whether it be the diet, the weight room habits, the sleep, all those things that we kind of have really kind of put some, some parameters on for our guys and to see it and how to go about it. And as we know, so many players have the aspiration to play professional football. We talk about being a pro now, and being a pro is going about your daily business in a right right way, just like many of you have to do the same thing. And the guys like Kenny and Caleb Sampson's here as well. We have guys that have been through a lot of different things and different ways of doing it, and, and to show our young guys is extremely important. Also, it's important for them that, you know, it's there's a lot of ways to win football games, as we know. And, and we believe in, in building the program in our own philosophy and ways. And, and when we integrate from the transfer portal, it's, it's extremely important that they understand how we go about it at the University of Kansas. Any other? Way, in the, way, 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 way in the back, Coach. Hey, Coach. Glenn Kinley with KSNT News. I just wanted to ask you about the addition of Kai Thomas. You mentioned Devin Neal. Uh, what does it mean to have Kai Thomas and have a, a local kid come into Kansas? And uh, what do you expect the share of the reps to be with, with two solid running backs? And we're excited about the addition of Kai Thomas, you know, right down the road from Topeka. Um, he had an excellent end to, to, to his season uh, previously at the University of Minnesota. Um, desiring to get to come back closer to home. You know, Devin and Kai have known each other since youth football days and youth sports. Uh, Devin was heavily involved in uh, 
in, in the, the recruiting visit process and communication. So there's not, uh, there, there's, you know, and Devin understands being a Lawrence native, how important it is for us to build this program, build it with depth, and it's going to be healthy competition, but they're going to really help each other. And uh, again, for us to, to, to add more local players is definitely a desire and a thing that, uh, you know, consistency, um, you know, flat out more wins and doing it in, in a way that that's going to be done right. We, we understand that in time that that'll help us um, in recruiting in general, especially with, with local players. Coach, we're going to go right front. Kirk, go ahead. And you're playing Spurt Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Kansas has beaten Texas twice in six years. What's up with that? And <laughs> how often do you hear about <coughs> beating Texas? Well, um, obviously the the Texas win, and and as we know, we're we're, we're we've been starving for some wins. So any of them we're going to talk about. And, and when you beat a program um, with the tra tradition and past success of the University of Texas and resources and all in all, is is something that you know we're going to be proud of. Um, I've said this to, um, as well, Kirk, is uh, to go down there at one and eight. And, and where we've been is probably one of the things I'm most proud of is that the preparation and the things that our guys kind of still were doing what we were asking, especially in year one, especially the timing that we came. Um, there's a lot of times, unfortunately, in the course of college football where, where guys can go through the motions. And this team didn't do that. And I'm extremely proud of them and our staff for that. And the fact that we went down to Fort Worth and, and, and played with some, some great effort there. Um, it made it easier to walk in some Texas high schools, to be quite honest, that, that there may be, you know, that the chance that maybe we didn't get on, on young men before. Now we have to build upon it, but it's definitely something positive. But uh, I know that uh, Coach Sarkeesian and that program is also going to be, you know, we probably hit them at a, at a time where, where they are in a struggle and, uh, um, and we're able to take advantage of it. But we know, uh, you know, obviously this is a new, a, a new year, new challenges. Got about five minutes. We go right in front here, Coach. Hey, Coach Colin Wilson, Action Network. Uh, last year, you had such a short time to prepare. 11, 12 personnel on offense, 4, 3, 4, 2, 5 on defense. With more time to prepare, will we see more wrinkles or more complexity this year? I think so. You know, again, especially on the defensive side, you know, we're asking guys that were outside linebackers become defensive ends. I think part of the things we've done in recruiting is try to recruit a little bit more to that and what we're going to be. Um, again, trying to that limited time and, and without a football, without spring ball, what are we going to be? Where, where do we hang our hat? What are we going to try to be good at offensively? I think uh, we've been able to, uh, you know, to answer some of those questions and find ways to be more multiple on each side. But uh, with that, it's still going to come down to fundamental execution. You know, I, you know, on those notes, and, and we talked a lot about, you know, the time frame, and I understand that. But when you look back at, um, you know, some things I think kind of get lost in the shuffle. We're one of the, we went from one of the most penalized teams in the Big 12 to being one of the least penalized teams in the country. And that says a lot about the job our assistants and our players did. And I, I think also the, the job we did in ball security and some of those things. Now, the next thing you do is, is to continue to develop your playmakers, find ways to be more diverse on both sides of the ball. And I, I look forward to that in year two. All right, Coach, we're going to go uh, left side, but fourth row. Danny Davis, Austin, American Statesman. Lance, you've mentioned him a couple times, but Devin Neal, where does he kind of go from what he did last year and what do you see for his future? Well, you know, if you have a chance here, if you haven't, you know, you get a chance to visit with the young man. You, you can see he's, uh, he's a very, he's mature beyond his years. He's passionate about helping Kansas football get where it needs to be. Uh, Lawrence native, two sport athlete. Um, but uh, played on the baseball team, but did not miss a spring practice. And and because his he knows where to. He also, as I mentioned about Kai Thomas, we we also have uh, uh, Sevian Morrison who transferred from Nebraska, and uh, Daniel Highshaw, Tory Lachlan, who played some running back. He's another versatile player. He understands. He embraces that that culture of competition as much as anybody, and he knows that. Uh, you know, maybe last year he, he burst on the scene a little bit. He'll, he'll, he won't have that luxury this year. But uh, again, he's one of those guys that's going to prepare and take his game to the next level. Anybody else have any questions? Anybody? 
Well, Coach, thank you for spending time with us. Wish you the best of luck this season. Thank you very thank you, much. Coach. Thank you, gentlemen.